We are here today at uh, Design uh, in Daba and um, there is a lot going on. I think downstairs I had a very small uh, preview of uh, the expo and um, looked quite interesting so I'm quite curious to go back and then of course there's a lot of lectures and talks going on on, on design and uh, that's also quite uh, inspirational I think I hear some amazing uh, speeches so um, I'm happy there and I also spoke today myself on uh, on what what I call social design or how you as a designer can um, can make yourself uh, at work in communities and how you can offer your skills to assist communities in self-organization, self-building and self-designing their own environment. So I'm going to take you to two projects I've been working on. One is in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. It's called the Afrikaner Wijk. And uh, the other one is in Anfield in Liverpool in England and Anfield mostly known for the people by its biggest football stadium. There are two projects where I already for over a period of like three to five years work with communities to what I call not only take matters in their own hands, stop waiting for the way plans are developed in their area but to sort of like challenge them to become active producers of their own daily environment, to actually uh, become producers of their own future. Both of these areas have been subjected to sort of like large master planning, large, uh, let's say, government designs about how the city or how that area should should shape itself and, and how uh, the future should evolve in that, uh, in that area. In Rotterdam, it was sort of like the city government thought of the expansion of the city centre toward the south of Rotterdam in what they called the creative city. Rotterdam had to become a creative capital uh, of, of the future that somewhere it started at the end of the 90s. They thought really about importing creative industries from Amsterdam or even from America. They, they talked about you know, the Silicon Valley of, of Rotterdam. You know? so, but the question is, if you think about a creative city, then what does that mean for the people that are living them? How can they become part of it? Or do we only want fashionable designers uh, to move in to this kind of area? We were basically tapped into the existing qualities and existing uh, creativities. We used all the amazing skills that existed and all the amazing creativity to bring that together and to combine that in workshops so people would, you know, uh, combine different skills and we have uh, at the moment we have like some cooperative uh, working places there one around food and one around clothing and one around services in which people share their creativity and their talents in order to come up with new products which they also sell in our uh, cooperative shop and which also uh, creates jobs in in the area but what it also does besides creating job it brings people uh, let's say outside the houses, it combines them uh, collectively in workplace and it makes them co-produce their environment, their ideas about how to live together and I think that's quite important. What is also very important is this idea of demonstrating skills in public. Um, when we went door to door to look for these skills and for the qualities to exist, we basically asked a lot of these people to come to the market and demonstrate what they could bring to the area. And by that, using the market again as an agora, where you test things, show things, try things, demonstrate things in public and can you learn about different trades. I think at the moment what we are having, we're having three cooperative workplaces and a shop and we are opening what we call a Wijkwaardehuis, a cooperative value store uh, in which we actually combine most businesses and a lot of members of the community in one neighborhood co-op that actually is strong enough to maybe bid against the local government for some of the neck plants that are cooked up. Nowadays you see that more and more space becomes uh, uh, sort of like one dimensional. Not longer uh, there's only maybe one group that inhabits it or it's controlled by one thing, by shopping or by one activity. So I see public space as the necessary arena to actually maybe listen to each other, learn from each other, uh, collectively uh, work in a way that we, we, we sort of create an understanding uh, what we need to, to, to move on.